In this video, I want to talk about coplanarity. So coplanarity is when all the points of a surface or surfaces lie on the same plane. Now it's treated in a bunch of different places in the ASME Y145 standard. So I've synthesized a lot of different ways to control coplanarity and I've brought them to you in this video today. The short answer is that there's really only one way to control coplanarity and that's with a profile tolerance. But I want to show you some other techniques you can use for different situations that don't necessarily control coplanarity. So the first is the continuous feature symbol. What the continuous feature symbol does is treat two surfaces or two features of size as the same feature. So you still only have the limits of size to deal with, so you don't have coplanarity. In this example I have right here, I have one inch plus or minus 200 thousandths. Both of those surfaces on this part uh, are gonna work independently. So one can be you know, angled one way, one can be angled the other way. There's no real coplanarity involved with this particular symbol. What the continuous feature symbol does do, however, is make you gauge that part as one thing instead of checking each of those features individually, okay? The next is controlling coplanarity with flatness, which doesn't control coplanarity at all, but you will see this. So I've got a size, you know, we've got the limits of size, but you want to refine it with the flatness. So the flatness has a two time symbol to indicate that it applies to both surfaces. What you're doing here is controlling the location of the surfaces within the limits of size, which is going to be a, a pretty wide band. And then you're further refining that with a flatness so that each surface is flat to within 50 thousandths. Now, both surfaces can still you know, move independently of each other. So one of them can be angled one way, one of them can be angled the other, they could be all over the place. There's no relation between those two surfaces because flatness only works on individual features. Even with that two time symbol, or if you have a note that says two surfaces, they're still independent of each other. The next is parallelism. Now, parallelism is an orientation tolerance. It's going to give you more control than the flatness and it gives you flatness. So when you control something with parallelism, you get flatness out of it for free. Same idea, I'm going to put the two times in front of the parallelism to indicate that it applies to both surfaces. All this is going to do, control the location within that limits of size band. The two surfaces have to be parallel but only to the datum and individually. One can be at the top of the tolerance band of the limits of size, one can be at the bottom. There's no coplanarity with parallelism. Again, even if you put two surfaces or two times by the feature control frame, no coplanarity. The way we do get coplanarity is with the profile symbol. So in this first example, I'm gonna do a few profile examples. The location of the surfaces is being controlled with the limits of size. If you notice, the size dimension has a tolerance and the profile does not have a datum reference. So all the profile is doing is controlling the flatness of the surfaces and the coplanarity of the surfaces. So as you can see in the figure, the surfaces can be in a lot of different places in that tolerance band, but they have to be coplanar to each other within that profile tolerance, okay? So this is still, uh, we're refining it, but still a lot of latitude for that surface. Now you can always tighten up the limits of size, but the more modern way to do it is to use a basic dimension. So that's our next example. You'll see here a profile with a basic dimension applying to both surfaces. This is going to control everything. So you've got, because the profile tolerance has a datum reference, it controls the location of the surfaces, it's going to control the orientation of the surfaces, uh, the flatness, the coplanarity, all at once. Now this tolerance is a little bit 
restrictive depending on what you're trying to do. Now, you can make it less restrictive by opening up the profile, but then you'd lose out on some of that orientation, right? So if you open up the profile, then the whole surface can tilt, even though it'll still be coplanar. The way we get around this is by using what's known as a composite profile tolerance. So this is a, a great way to learn composite profiles because it's very similar to using a size dimension with a tolerance. So in the first segment of this uh, pro composite profile, you'll notice it's got a datum reference. This indicates that this controls the location of the surfaces. So it's got a wide tolerance of 40 thousandths. And then the second segment uh, refines that to 50 thousandths. So what this means is that both surfaces have to be within that wider tolerance, but they have to be coplanar to each other and then flat within that 50 thousandths. So it accomplishes something very similar to applying a dimension with the tolerance and then just applying a profile to control the coplanarity. The composite profile is really powerful. This is a kind of simple example, but that's basically what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to refine the tolerance so you're not restricted by just having that basic dimension and then that really tight profile. You can control things separately depending on what the needs of the application are, okay? So that's it, I wanna make this video nice and short. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and check out the channel for more GDMT videos coming soon.